So Unreal has this way of visualizing the, the sun, sky, and clouds. I guess you should, we should distinguish between the effect of the sky and actually seeing the sky, as well as the effect of the sun versus seeing the sun. So the effect of the sun is with a directional light, and the effect of the sky is with a skylight. But actually seeing them is happening from the sky atmosphere. That's where we're seeing the blue of the sky. And so if I turn it off, it goes away. And also these volumetric clouds. However, there's two problems or issues with this that have led me to look for uh, a different technique, a different approach to that. One of them is that I like to actually have the render passes separated out into direct and indirect lights. And the way that I do that is by turning off the sunlight so we only have the skylight and then rendering that out and then vice versa with, the sky, with turning off the sky and rendering out just the sun, giving me direct and indirect light. Problem is that when you turn off the sun, all of the sky disappears as well. Now, not the effect of the sky. You can still see the sky is lighting these things here. That's coming from this skylight here, but the sky atmosphere just disappears along with the clouds when the sun is, or the directional light is not illuminating it. The second motivation is if you want to be able to art direct your sky, you want to have it look like this, or maybe you want to have it instead look like this, or maybe you want to have a painted version of your sky like that, or maybe even like that. All of these are 360 panoramic HDR images, either from photography or it's like hand-drawn matte paintings of uh, sky and clouds and that's what this video is about is how to create these and um, use them in Unreal so that you can see them but also so that they actually affect the lighting. So with all of that in mind let's just jump in and start going. We're going to begin with how to set up the emissive material that we'll need for the sky dome. So now one thing that's important to note straight off the bat is that you want to have these images as EXRs as not as dot HDRs. And I'll, I'll show you why. If I read in here an EXR into here and I come into my shader and I'm going to make this unlit and two-sided and I come over here and I drag that into the emissive color, then it works just fine. However, if I read in this, which is a dot HDR map, and read it into the emissive color, I get this error, which is texture sample UVW input required for cube map sample. And so, you know, you of course can get it to work, but it's just kind of a pain. And so it's just much easier to just save stuff out as EXRs in the first place. And then your workflow is just like you're familiar with, with other texture maps of sticking things into here and using the UV controls that you're used to using and so on. All right, so let's talk about how to make this then. So on the material, as you saw, you need to set it to unlit. We need to set it to two-sided. You don't actually want to set it to is sky. That's an option here if you type in sky. You can see that there is a checkbox for is sky. The reason we don't want that on is because later on when we are modifying our skylight here and we want to modify the sky distance which I have set to a thousand. You can also get different effects if you set it to like one, then you're gonna get much more of it capturing the objects around it and such. Anyway, none of that works unless you have 
real-time capture turned off and if you have is sky on you need to have real-time capture on as well for that to function so your mileage may vary but I like to just have is sky off I like to have this off and I just capture it down here with uh, the capture tool when I want to and that allows me to be able to mess around with the uh, distance of the sky and what it calculates out when it captures the image and puts it into the skylight from the dome and, and whatnot. Let me also show you my material instance that I have and the controls that I have in it. So I have here a tint so I can do a little bit of coloration to the sky if I want to. I have a saturation, actually a desaturation, so I can lower the saturation of the sky. This is something I stole from the Matrix Awakens where they have their sky map in there. And here, let me show you that one. Drag this onto here and come in like this. And we can raise up the intensity like that. And what they've done in the Matrix Awakens is they've lowered the saturation down like a lot. So it looks like a gray sky rather than a pretty sunset kind of sky like it originally was. And so that's a cool little thing. And then we have, the, as you just saw, the intensity. But we also have the this approximation of Lux where I'm multiplying it by, as you can see here, by 10,000. I'll get into later in a different video details of why I'm doing that, but real quick, it's basically that you have real world light values that are, you know, are measured. And so I'm matching the values of this emissive object to be the same emissive values as you would find in a real sky, whether, whether that's actually a matte painting or a photograph kind of doesn't matter, which is the cool thing. So I'm basically matching those to real world values. But again, that'll be a different video where we talk about lighting um, for sun and sky. In this one, it's basically just that you get it bright enough so that you can see it in that, um, in that exposure environment. And then of course here where you can just swap out the, the image that you're reading into it. So that's the parameters that come out of the material. And then let me jump over to the actual material and look at how that's put together. So we've got the sky dome here going into emissive. I've got zero set for the base metallic and specular. I don't know if you actually need that. It looks like it's gray, so you probably don't, but you know, just to be safe. And let me delete these nodes that aren't doing anything here. And I'll just sort of walk you through what I've got here from, let's do it from left to right. So we've got the color map here. RGBA is going into the desaturation. I guess I don't really need RGBA. I could have just done RGB. And then I have in the desaturation node, I have a parameter going in and this, this one minus X, this basically inverts it. And then this invert node, this basically makes it so that I have the value at one does nothing and it goes down to zero. So I get something that makes sense to me as an artist with moving things around, having it going from zero to one felt weird. So I got that in there. And then here I've got another parameter. Um, this is the one that's set to 10,000 um, called Lux approximate, just because it's not really very scientific. It's just a multiplication. And I'll talk later about how I'm arriving at these numbers of 10,000 and why I have that in there, but we'll circle back to that. But anyway, it's just a multiplication of that. And then I have, again, another multiplication of an intensity control. So it's kind of like I'm getting the big changes here, and this is just sort of the little finessing. And then I've got the tint, which is just a color parameter going into a multiply. So pretty straightforward uh, with uh, the shader. Let's talk about these uh, objects that I have here. So I've got the sky dome, which we've been talking about and taking a look at. And I also have this other geometry, which is just a sphere that I've made really emissive. And that sphere is placed just at the edge of the, the dome. And what I've done is I've parented a directional light under that, which means that when I 
rotate this sphere, which has its pivot point down here at the world origin, then the sphere will move around in the sky and I can just rotate it kind of like along the surface of the, the big dome and then because the directional light is parented under it that follows with it or it, it mimics its orientation values and then you can see that the shadows change the light on the water and all the other objects changes as well and so it's just a fun little trick to be able to deal with that. Another thing I should mention speaking of geometry is that here on the dome light you want to make sure that cast shadows is turned off for this because you obviously don't want it to be casting shadows so cast shadow is turned off and the same I believe is true with the Sun also turn that off you don't want it to cast shadows that would be weird so that's pretty much all there is to it with uh, the setup in Unreal. Let me also say something about, you know, matte painting, these kind of things, and, you know, strategies for how you might deal with that. One thing I've got going here is I have a, uh, a cube at the world origin, and I also have a camera that I've read in here. I'm in Substance Painter in here, and and then I should also say that the normals are flipped on this uh, this half sphere that I have and I'm then just kind of uh, jumping to the camera and then from that point where I'm kind of like in the, the center of the world looking up at the sky I'm just like rotating around and I can just sort of sketch in kind of the placement of where I want to put the clouds, you know, and just sort of like get that as a starting point. And then I can, if I want to maybe go into Photoshop where I have a uh, little more tools for how to paint stuff nicely and I can, you know, paint away in Photoshop and make my, my clouds with knowing where they're going to be placed and uh, another thing to note with that is that the the size of the proportions of the image the aspect ratio in order to have it not look sort of squeezed together and look natural is really effectively a a 4 to 1 ratio and it's 4 to 1 because we have on a, on like a traditional 360 panorama photo of the sky the bottom half of it is what's below the horizon it's the ground and we only want the top half of it and that means if you're going to be taking and downloading an HDR image from I don't know Polyhaven or something and you're basically just gonna to have to take it into nuke and crop it in half so that you can have it fit properly onto your UVs on this half sphere and the way that you set that up is you make a primitive sphere you cut it in half and then you go to the UVs and you normalize them so it like you know resizes the the UVs to fit into the new UV space. So we've been talking about the aspect ratio of images, the proportionality of them. Here we have uh, what you're going to get out of Substance Painter. Substance Painter is always going to export out sort of a square image for you. So let me jump in here real quick and show you. So if I come into here and export this out, go into export textures, I have it set to EXR. And it's going to export out like this. And as I was saying, you're going to want to, if, if you want to bring this into Photoshop and paint further on it, then you're going to really need to convert it to this uh, four by one format so that the clouds have the right proportionality. But there's another issue that I also want to make everybody aware of, which is when you're reading an image in from Substance Painter, it's going to be coming in, if you write out an EXR, it's going to be an ACES CG. However, Unreal is not going to read EXRs as ACES CG. It's going to read them as linear sRGB. And so you just need to kind of come in as a pre-step from here and 
read it in as ACCG in the nuke and then write it out. You can see here I've got a linear Rec 709 sRGB. That's the linear format that, or the working space that Unreal Engine works in by default. Conversely, for an image coming in from Photoshop, if we, this is a PNG image, and normally you would read a PNG image into, a, say, a program like Maya with a gamma of a 2.2, so a, a, an sRGB conversion on the image. The color sRGB texture is what we call this. However, this doesn't look like it does in Photoshop, and that's because, let me show you, there. So here's Photoshop, and then Here's the image in Nuke, and you can see there's just an obvious difference in appearance. And that's because Photoshop is a non-color managed software. It doesn't work in ACES, and so therefore you need to actually read it in initially into your program with an inverse of the display. So I'm going to come into here and set this to inverse 2.2 display which is my display up here is gamma 2.2 display and doing an inverse of it kind of means it like you know takes it away and puts it back so it effectively does nothing to the the image and it just looks exactly the way it looks in your non color managed programs like Photoshop and then you would need to read it in like that and then if you wanted to say convert this to an EXR which we'll want to do because for our our dome light then you would just you know use this same writing it out into that linear sRGB color space that Unreal wants to have. Do be aware that when you do this, when you do this inverse of the display, the tone mapping will convert values of 1, so just regular white, into values of 16. So in the case that we have where this is a sky and a sky is luminous, that won't be a problem, that'll be fine. It would definitely be a problem if we're working with sort of textures where we're defining the object of a regular surface like an apple or whatever because it would make the object luminous which we don't want. The sky in our case is luminous so it's not a problem. So that's it for the overview of creating sky domes in Unreal. I'm gonna come back in a different video and talk about the lighting setup which is sort of a physically based lighting approach in a future video. So I hope you enjoyed this and I guess I'll see you then.